it has been charged over and over again that the Americans pay more for pharmaceutical medications and drugs. Tell us a little bit about the prices we pay relative to the costs, to what, what other countries pay, and so on. Uh, well, we pay more than double than other countries uh, because other countries negotiate. But that's not the only reason. You know, there's been a lot of talk about the Sackler fam family and the no opioid problem. epidemic. Well, the beginning of pharmaceutical marketing and of detailed men going to doctors uh, and of overselling uh, and of creating names for diseases that don't even exist so that you'd have something that a product could treat. All of that began with Arthur Sackler in 1950. He was the uh, major uh, marketer for Pfizer Pharmaceuticals and other companies. He represented Valium and Librium. He was the father of uh, medical advertising. Well, if you combined that now, 70 years later, when it's flourished and all this money that we see uh, on direct-to-consumer advertising, and you realize that we're one of only two countries in the world that even allow this type of advertising on television, and you combine that with how sloppy our prescribing has been amongst our doctors that allowed all of these opioids to be unleashed on the American public, uh, you begin to realize that the problem is multifactorial. It's not simply that we over-market and over-advertise or that Americans have become used to consumption of drugs as the first trick to trying to get over uh, bad health instead of saying, how do I make my life adjustments to create health? It's that combined with direct-to-consumer advertising. We should always remember that pharmaceutical companies spend more in aggregate on medical advertising than they do on research. That tells you a lot. Yes, and they always defend their high prices because of the high price of research, when the reality is the high price is mostly paying the costs of promotion and advertising. Well, when I was at Pfizer, you know, one of the most successful uh, products in the world at the time was Lipitor uh, to treat high cholesterol. What people don't realize is that when Lipitor came to the market, it was not the first statin to treat high cholesterol. It was the fifth. Now, was it a little bit better? Maybe than the other four. But really what made that the first $10 billion a year drug was Pfizer's marketing machine. 